Another great and fantastic example of animal behavior and ethology and studying animals in their natural habitat, Courtship in Birds of Paradise. Fantastic name for a rock album. You've heard of peacocks already. The crazy thing is that these things have to run away from animals that want to eat them, and they have to carry this big giant uh, carriage on the back of them. The fact that they can do that and still stick around means they must be awesome. And they also use these things for courtship to kind of show off their fancy plumage and decorations. So the point is, if they can do this and they can show off their fancy feathers and they can stay alive and be able to run away from foxes that are trying to bite their tails off, they must be good at surviving. And so this exaggerated trait uh, just gets more and more exaggerated. And this is what's happened basically through uh, evolution and natural selection that these peacocks with the largest tails that can still evade predators become even more attractive. And so this is an example of courtship. So you can see here, if a human male tries to wear kind of peacock tail, I don't think it's gonna work because it doesn't work for our species, but for peacocks, that is incredibly attractive. So that's an example of mate selection. Male birds, it tends to be the males of the species who have bright plumage. That's the fancy word for the types of uh, decorative feathering and colors that they have to help them with attracting mates. They perform a courtship dance where they put this up into the air and they go, actually, I don't know what sound they make, but they do a little shaking um, demonstration of how cool they are. Males that can survive with these bright feathers and be able to evade predators, uh, that demonstrates a high level of fitness. And when we talk about fitness, we're talking about fitness in terms of natural selection as well too. So obviously, if they have a high level of fitness, they tend to mate more um, and they tend to pass on their traits to the next generation. So the next generation also has these traits and the quality of those traits will also be passed on as well too. So natural selection over time will make these traits even more exaggerated. Fancy story, not applicable to humans so much. So sorry, fellas. So this other story here is something you're probably less familiar with. You probably heard of peacocks. You understand that they've got this crazy plumage going on back here, but you probably have thought less about the strategies that salmon will use for breeding. You've probably heard about salmon in terms of salmon sushi, but let's give these guys a few minutes, shall we? So they breed in rivers and these rivers are connected to the Pacific Ocean. Here's what basically happens. One year after spawning, the young salmon tend to migrate to the ocean. Now, they plan to come back though, and it turns out that the males come back in kind of two patterns, and the males have different names. We'll just call them jacks, and we'll call them hook noses. Jack sounds a lot cooler than hook nose, but we'll see. It kind of evens out in a little bit. So jacks refer to males that grow very quickly and return back to the river after only two years, whereas hook noses are males that grow more slowly, but they end up a little bit bigger and they go back after three years. So this kind of reminds me of my high school life, right? You had the, I guess jack sounds like jocks, but in this case, the hook noses, they end up a little bit bigger. So the ones that can kind of bully around and fight and stuff like that. And you have the little, the less mature ones, they got to figure out another different kind of strategy in order to kind of attract uh, mates. So they have different strategies actually based on their size and based on the amount of time that they've spent away. Different strategies to maximize survival and reproduction. So these big guys, the hook noses, they actually fight each other to fertilize eggs. The jacks, this is kind of crazy, they sneak up behind females and fertilize the eggs without actually being noticed. So they're the sneaky jacks versus the Hook noses, good way to remember that is these fish that have been punching themselves, punch, punching themselves, punching each other in noses so much that they have little hooks for noses. But the hook noses fight, that's their technique for survival and reproduction. The jacks know they can't fight, so they use a little bit of a spy style and they sneak up behind females and they fertilize the eggs without being noticed. What a great thing to actually study. Can you imagine if you were a scientist out there studying and you came up with this story? Fantastic stuff. Think twice before your next slice of salmon sushi. Stay away from peacock sushi.